Okay, I just received this today. Uh, this is that little shaper that is so famous on YouTube. And I'm intending to do a full restoration on it if I can. Anyway, I spent a good part of the afternoon fiddling with it, trying to figure out how to adjust the stroke on the thing. Turn it on and show you how it's working. Disconnected the feed mechanism. You can see I've got the stroke set pretty short. Here's a closer look at the feed mechanism. Let me get it to work here. I'm looking at this little mechanism down here and uh, I just really love this little mechanism. It's very, very clever. I have pulled this part off. You can um, look at how well that thing is made. This is just a cover for that and it's just, it's just the machining on this thing is just beautiful. Anyway, um, so this gear, uh, you can remove this gear. Well, where the gear is sitting has a lot to do with where the feed is going to occur. Uh, so you could set it up so that the feed was occurring when the stroke was uh, on its way. What you want to do is, of course, have it dis have it feeding the cross feed uh, on the back side. So uh, you have to fiddle with that a little bit and just arrange where this gear intersects this to make sure that that's all right. Uh, so you can mess that up if you're not careful. And there's lots of little idiosyncrasies with this thing. It's very, very charming, wonderfully interesting. Okay, let's see if I can feed this. I'm just going to feed it manually. Let's take a little bit of a cut here. Give it a little manual cross feed. Okay, now I've got it set up on auto feed. It's going to take a nice little cut here, I think. See the chips coming off. Okay, here's a different angle on that same cut. Okay, I've got everything pretty much as disassembled as I'm going to try and remove as much rust as I can. I'm not going to try for an ultimate perfect finish on this thing. Look at how bad this pulley is rusted. Man, that is just horrible. I built a little stand so that I can more conveniently work on this delicate mechanism. I'm not going to attempt to dismantle all of this, these little parts in here, little tiny things that would never be able to successfully put it back together in my estimation. So I'm not even going to bother. It's not too bad anyway. Uh, I can remove a little bit of rust around. Most of this is not rust anyway. Most of that's grease apparently. So um, I should be able to clean that up pretty well and have it look very presentable by the time I'm done. And mainly uh, it'll still, <laughs> hopefully it'll still work. Uh, that's kind of a, a key thing. So, uh, so that is that. And while I have this apart, <clears throat> I'm going to show you how this works. This is the Scotch yoke mechanism, and it ma mates with this. This part goes in the outside like that, 
And this is the little arm that drives the Scotch yoke. Uh, so that fits right on there. And boy, that thing is pretty and smooth and beautiful. The machining on this, the tolerances are extremely precise. Uh, it's quite beautifully done and it, I can't believe the attention to detail. Anyway, he did such a wonderful job on it. The guy really knew what he was doing. Uh, really um, admirable. <laughs> very, very admirable. And there's a lot of uh, this part here. I don't know if you can tell, but that's brazed on there. He did a lot of that brazing and welding and every technique a machinist should know. This is brazed here. So anyway, he did a, a really, just a superb job on this true master craftsman. All right, let's take a look at how this mechanism works. I've loosened this up now. And you can see that this, all this is going to do is change where this engages. This arm took the bearings off, but that goes right on that arm. That arm goes back and forth. And that's okay. And what this does is change where exactly that engages. And the way you lock that down, lock that down right here. See that little that little flap sort of thing that swings across there got to be a more elegant name for that. Anyway, that whole thing locks it down. What you do is you swing it around, and wherever you want it, you lock it down. That's a greater throw. you got a lesser throw. Now, kind of the real trick is, well, <laughs> really the real trick is, how do you even begin to see what you're doing from out here? All you can see out here is this. You got no clue what's going on with any of this stuff. Um, this nut really doesn't have any function except to hold this gear on. I'm not sure. Well, this gear is acting as a holds the bearing in position too. There's a ball bearing back here. Come on, you can come off. Well, anyway, you can see there's a ball bearing inside there. And this gear threads on. So it's threading on and it determines how tight that thing is. And I was having a devil of a time adjusting this because I kept... I thought you had to loosen this and tighten it. You don't have to do anything with this. All you use is that nut right there. This just basically tells you how tight the bearing is going to be. Okay. You could tighten it on with that. And what you're going to adjust is right here. It's a little tricky though because you have to just hold the bull gear where you want it. And somehow intuitively you're supposed to know where that is. And then you lock it down, right? Uh, there's just about no way to tell what's going on from the outside. So, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm not sure this is a tentative plan. I have plans to cut a window right there. This is structurally, that won't hurt anything structurally if I do that. This is not even, this this hole here doesn't even do anything. I could probably cut that out if I wanted to. Um, I might do that actually, but anyway, I was going to use that for just a, you know, a bolt hole for the mounting plate to cover that. So I'm going to cut a hole here somewhere. About like that, and I've already looked at it to see that, yeah, you can actually see what's going on with the bull gear if you do that. So I'll cut a hole right there, 
so that you can look in there and see what the heck it is you're doing without trying to guess by ESP or something. So anyway, um, with some hesitancy, I don't think I'm altering the basic function of this thing in any serious way, but I will make it to you so a little bit more clear, a little more intuitive.